The opinions expressed on the ACB Media Network are those of the content providers and should not be viewed as an endorsement of any product or service. Nor does it reflect the views of the American Council of the Blind, its elected officials, or its staff. Hello everybody and welcome to Herbie's Cooking Corner for January 31st, 2023. My name is Herbie Allen, and I am joined as always by my wonderful co-facilitator, Twinkling Tori. Hello, Tori. Hello, Herbie. Hello, people. Hello, and uh, you are now tuned in to Herbie's Cooking Corner, in case you did not already know that. And uh, if you do, well, we hope that uh, you'll still stick around anyway. Today is going to be a fun recipe. I'm going to act like I know what I'm doing, and <laughs> maybe I do, maybe I don't, because I have never made bread before. I have made dough for bread-like things, but never actual bread. So uh, this will be a first time experience for me. And uh, how things are going to work is uh, we're gonna have plenty of time for more generalized comments and whatnot. So uh, when we call on the questions today, um, during the preparation part, it'll be based on the, the questions on what am I doing so far, which I may or may not have an answer for actually, but so you, you ask at your own risk, but, uh, um, as luck would have it, I know what I'm doing with this recipe cause I've made it several times. So if Herbie doesn't know what he's doing, maybe I can help. Exactly. And, uh, I know I kept you around for some reason. No, um, I know I'm useful sometimes. Yeah, and uh, so this is, that's what we got in store today, and then during the rising process will be more time for things like alternative recipes, things like that, and we'll also have Corey's tips, uh, Corey, Tori's tips, I need my second cup of coffee, and uh, we'll remedy that in a little bit. And by the way, I do want to mention that I did get last week's French Toast call uploaded to YouTube last night, so... Check that out if you've not already gotten a chance to do so, and I'm going to uh, start getting some more calls uploaded this week. We've got several guest appearance calls that we've had in the past. I want to get them dealt with and all that jazz. So today we're going to be making Jazz's homemade sandwich bread, and uh, there's no bee Jazz is in just it. the person I got the recipe off of, by the way, just in case you're interested. Okay. Yeah, I, I was wondering that, but uh, I forgot to ask. I'm glad you clarified that because I didn't see any scats in there or uh, anything like that. So first thing we are going to need, well, our ingredients are basic, actually very simple. Water, yeast, sugar, softened butter, flour, and uh, more softened butter. And... That's the easy part. The more complex part is going to be the what happens when they all get put together. So, because we got to watch the, you know, see the bread rise and all that uh, good stuff. Hey, can I say all that jazz? Oh, I can. So, Technically. <laughs> I am, we're going to start things off with two and a half cups of water. So I'm going to get out my measuring cups and my mismatched measuring cups, actually. And my braille measuring cups have finally arrived. Yay! And we're hearing some background noise in the thing, guys. So uh, make sure hosts, moderators, gentle people, you are all muted. See when play. Otherwise, I'll get annoyed and... Uh, I don't know if that you want that. We are, yeah, we are giving Desi and Diane permission to use those mute buttons. Yes, and then and then place to yourselves too, guys, because you you could be the ones unmuted. I can't look. So. Um. Anyway, and uh, we 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 love you both, and uh, you'll find uh, Desi and Diner at Desi's Diner. Di Desi and Diane at Desi's Diner. Oh my goodness. That you you really good. need that cup of coffee. I'm sorry, but you do. really do. <laughs> so we'll get to that in a second because I, I can't drink. I mean, I can and I can't, but I want to be at least try to be professional for you guys. So I'm putting... You do? Keys to, yeah, believe it or not. So first thing I'm doing is filling my two cup measuring cup up uh, with water. I... 
got this from a blind my smart that has a complete set of measuring cups that goes from a two to like an eight cup if you don't have a two cup measuring cup which most of you probably don't that's not a problem just simply use one cup or you could do a bunch of half cups but that is a lot of work and the nice thing is about the measuring cup is when you fill it with water you a make sure you don't drop it because you're juggling multiple measuring cups and B, you can just dry it off and put it back in the thing because it's just had water in it. And the nice, other nice thing about that is I can reuse this half cup for the uh, half cup of sugar that I'm going to need. I think it was a half cup of sugar. I'll double check my recipe. And um, let us now do the other half Actually, cup. Actually, it's a third of, of a one. cup of sugar third of a cup okay well I've got these three cups on a ring the fourth cup fell off the ring but that's okay so either way we're using the same one all right third cup of sugar let us get out my sugar container and I suggest you hold on to that two cup for the, that you use for the water well I almost dropped it earlier so I don't know if holding on to it's a good idea but yes, it's going to make the flour a lot easier to use the two cup measuring cup. I would agree with that. So you did have your half cup as well, right? Because it says two and a half cups of water. Yes. Okay. Just checking. Yes. All right. There is the sugar. And uh, I keep my sugar in the container, but uh, you can, it comes originally, of course, in those uh, paper bag things. And, uh, but I put it in the container because it's easier to store that way. So this container is just about empty. So I will put the new bag in. And one of the questions I got, by the way, and the sugar reminds me of this, is how can you fill a salt shaker from a big container of salt without spilling and my answer to that is very carefully with style um try to use the spout mechanism if you can but uh, and and do it over the sink so over the that's sink my... or something um, yep we have a food waste bin and i would do it over that because then it just goes in the food waste bin and i don't even have to clean up the mess it's not great Okay, so, so we need to add the uh, butter and the yeast, and the flour is going to be interesting because we actually add that in two cups at a time. It always helps with these recipes to actually look at the instructions too to know what you are doing. So this calls for four and a half teaspoons of rapid rise yeast. I've got the yeast packages, and so we're going to see, I think it's just one yeast package is equivalent, but... Uh, Let's see if we can find out. Hey, Google, how many teaspoons are in a package of yeast? Two and a quarter teaspoons. On the website bakinglikeachef.com, they say, in general, a package so two of yeast packages. weighs seven grams or one quarter ounce and equals two and a quarter teaspoons. To find out more, look for the link in your Google Home or Google Assistant app. Well, you know what? I tell you what, just to be sure, you know, since we got Abacus Made Simple on here, where, where, where's our Abacus people? Add it up. No, I'm just kidding. Um, yeah, we do need two packages of yeast, which is good because the yeast packages come in a package of three. Yeah, now, I know, <laughs> it, it just also helps now when you can find your package of yeast, which... I know I put over here because I wanted the oh, access no, to it. Oh, they're not there over there, or are they? Oh, no. They actually are over here where I put them. I just forgot that I put them on the bottom shelf rather than on the top shelf. That's always frustrating and a little bit nerve-wracking when you're doing this live, by the way. So, piece of advice, if you're doing a cooking call, prepare ahead of time so you actually know, like, it seems like you know what you're doing. But Yeah, and I really... gathering up your supplies in one place would also be a good idea. Yeah, J just some helpful tips there, but uh, which some people don't always follow. But no, but uh, what can I say? 
I've got to, I've got other things to do, like ACB Presents, you know, participating on that and making sure everybody knows to the, come to the call that I haven't prepared for. I see, right. All right, so these packages of yeast are rather interesting. And I kind of... Uh, yeah, okay, I kind of tore the packaging in a weird way, so that's not... So as long as you get into it and then the yeast good. goes in the bowl, it doesn't matter. Yep. Which I think most of it did, So, which is kind of a bread recipe. So... Uh, otherwise, you know, sometimes maybe I should, in this case, the jar might have worked a little bit better, but, uh, that's okay. I always use the packages. Yeah. All right. So now we're going to take out the butter and this is the spreadable butter. So it's really already soft. It doesn't say melted. It just says softened butter. So... Yeah, doing it like that with the spreadable butter is fine. And uh, let's see, how many teaspoons do we need? Three tablespoons of softened butter. So I'm going to get out my two tablespoon measuring spoon. There's my teaspoon, but I want my tablespoon. Oh, there's my tablespoon. And uh, can I also find my other tablespoon? So the, uh, I guess we'll just have extra butter, I guess, of the third ta ta tablespoon. You can't have too much butter. So uh, the two tablespoon, by the way, the blind mice smart ones have a braille on them. So that's how I also know. But I can also tell just by the size. And if you stack your measuring spoons together, you can see what, or measuring cups, you can see without any kind of labeling the order they're supposed to go in. And if you just have the standard four cups, that'll be easier for that purpose because they're going to go in order from uh, one cup, half cup, third cup, and fourth cup. And while I'm dealing with the butter, let's see if we have any questions. Remember, I just want questions right now on what we have done so far. And... If you want to offer alternatives or anything like that, let's stick to that a little bit we'll later unless you like later. have to. Yeah. I mean, if you have to run, I understand, but. Okay. Um, um, Abraham has uh, a question. Uh, I, we just need to make him a co-facilitator. What do you think there, Tori? For, for now, let's just deal with his question or comment. <laughs> All right. There's your answer to that one, Abraham. Okay. Go ahead. Okay, so, Abraham, go ahead. Abraham. Hi. Um, I was just Hello. wondering. Can you guys hear me? Yep. Yes. Hopefully. Okay. Um, I was just wondering, uh, is, does it go for warm water or... Um, just, are you just, or just like, room temperature, regular water. It doesn't specify. Okay. Nope. Okay. Um, and the, the flower, so you just... Uh, Cook the flour straight into the water. Uh, we'll no. be dealing with the flour in a minute. No, at the moment oh, you put, I'll, the, you I'll put the water in, and then you add the like the yeast and the sugar, and we'll be adding salt in a second, um, and then we'll okay. be dealing with the flour. Okay. Cool. Um, can you add, Daisy, please mute me a bit far away from my uh, device. Yep. All right. Well, thank you, uh, Abraham, for that question. Do we have anybody over on Clubhouse? Uh, no hands in Clubhouse, Herbie. Okay. Anybody else on Zoom? Yes, we have the infamous Spider Woman, I believe, Heidi. Heidi. All right, Heidi. Hey, how do you like that? I made sure they knew who you were this time. <laughs> Hello, guys. Um, Hello. If if this one is a little out of the park, forgive me, but I do have another tip on how to fill the salt shaker. We'll deal with that uh, after, yeah. Okay. Yep. Okay. You can tell us um, how but well we, the, the it, we, 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 we forgive you, though, because at 55 below, you are down to feel brain freeze, so, you know. Uh... <laughs> yeah. Even I think that's too cold. Yeah. Um, so that's saying yeah. something. Yeah. 
<laughs> so we'll be staying in on this weekend. Yeah. I think that's a good idea. Yeah. Um, unless you have like tons of fur and you are a penguin, then uh, I think yeah, even don't go penguins anywhere. would want to stay in this weekend if that's the case. Yeah. Even the dog's going to have his winter coat on this weekend when he goes out and booties. Yeah. Oh, boy. Uh, well, but, yeah, we, we, you can uh, we, um, raise your hand again when we're, uh, when, um, we're doing the general tips and stuff, and then you can tell us that tip for the salt shaker. Hey, okay, Z. All right, especially since I'm not even sure if the person who asked the question is even on the call, so maybe they are. No, but we want to hear the tip anyway. Oh, well, no, we, we do, yes, definitely. Um... Do we have any questions in Clubhouse? Do we no. have anybody in Clubhouse? <laughs> no. Well, not, not okay. too many of us, no. <laughs> not too many of you? Oh, <laughs> well, at least there are that, people guys. there. Hi, people. Exactly. Hi, people. We love you. And, uh, all right, let's go back over to uh, Zoom. By the way, though, for even if you're not in Clubhouse now, this event is also on replay in Clubhouse after the fact, so you can always uh, subscribe to the ACB Club and uh, look for the replay of this event. So we hope you'll just take advantage of that as well. Just unfortunately for you, that you cannot then raise your hand to ask questions. Nope. But you can always send your questions to community at acb.org and they will get forwarded on to us. So, all right. Uh, who is n anybody else in Zoom? No one right now, thanks. All right. So, Tori, you said I can just use a spoon. I don't need a mixer. Yep. I just do it with a spoon. All right. So, you know, I thought about being extra noisy, guys, and uh, really having some fun. But, you know what? But then you fall your wife's head. <laughs> I did. But she's in the other room, so. Yes, but those strings are pretty noisy. They are. So we're just going to stir this up with a spoon. Yeah, I always just use a spoon. Because it's easier when, later when you're adding the power to keep track of things anyway. I would imagine so. Alright, so... Let's get the sugar out of the bottom here, because I can kind of tell that it's still not fully blended in. So we're mixing up the water, sugar, yeast, and the butter. So I'm becoming the breadwinner of the family here. What can I say, guys? Or bread baker or something. Yeah. The idea at this point is just to get them roughly mixed. They'll mix better when you've got flour to mix them with. I would imagine so. As um, the one advantage, you know, I'm going to go see, though, how a whisk will do for stirring as well, at least for this initial part, because I'd like it to decomp the butter a little bit more. And then... We will go back to the spoon for when we add in the flour because the whisk is not going to uh, work out too well for that part. So, nope. I'm just using the wire whisk that I used last week for the French toast. Yes, I know. Last week we made the French toast, and this week we're making the bread. So, that's just hey, how these. We don't want to do things the conventional way. No. All right, so now we're going to get back out my two-cup measuring cup and then get out my package of flour because we're going to need it. And uh, let's see here. This is my flour package. You can hear it doesn't really uh, rattle. And... Um, this is my sugar package. It. it does. But let's see if you can hear the different... Now, this is the sugar package. So you can see that actually has uh, looser granules in it versus the flour. It, it definitely feels a lot heavier and whatnot. So 
If I'm wrong, well, both containers need to be filled anyway. So, but no, uh, you're right. I I know. You can but. tell by the sound. You're right. Yep. Hey, so yeah. Just, anyway, look, I've just told you you're right. Just go with it. I am. I am. But you can tell, so guys, anyway, you could, just by shaking, I could tell which was which. I did not need any kind of specialized equipment or anything like that. And so I, I mentioned this because A, not everybody can afford the specialized equipment. B, the some of the specialized equipment like iPhones, I'm sorry, they, they work to a point, but... Some of us are not really skilled with camera aiming, and that can really make things a challenge. And yes, this is flower. And uh, so when you can do things by hand, I really, I think it makes life a lot easier. And I do love technology, but it does technology have its limits. Technology is great, but... So, I'm going to, this two cup measuring cup is a little bit too big for the flower thing, so I'm going to pour the bag into the flower. This is probably going to make an awful mess when all is said and done. But You're uh, making a mess? No. Really? No. Never. Why? Uh -huh. I'm just I I'm, I'm the cleanest person you'll ever find. Right. Yeah, I, I know. Just because you can't see the mess doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Oh so, so like if a tree falls in the forest and then nobody's around, it still makes a sound? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, just because nobody hears it doesn't mean it doesn't make a sound. And how about the cat in Schrodinger's box? You know, is it still alive or... Uh... No, that okay. one's more complicated. Ah, ah, good to know. So, what's less complicated is uh, pouring in the flour into the bowl. And now I'm going to stir this with the spoon. We need eight cups of flour, and it says to add in two cups of flour at a time. So that means we will be doing this process four times. Yes, I, I, I actually figured that out for myself. I did not need oh, well, an abacus. Or, and I know. I'm, aren't I great? Yeah. And you know, there is a way to tell if the cat's alive without opening the box. If it yells at you from when you pass by the box? Well, if you nudge the box slightly, if it's alive, you're soon going to know about it. At least every cat I've ever had. Yep. Well, it's obvious that Schrodinger actually did not really perform the experiment with a cat. You know, he, he just... No, he because know. else he'd have known that. <laughs> Mind you, he probably couldn't get the cat in the box in the first place. That was probably why. Well, he have, might have had an easier time if he'd have tried to put the cat in the hat. Hmm, no, not necessarily. You ever tried to put a cat in a hat? No. I, I don't advise it. Not unless like you right. want to lose a few layers of skin in the process. That's quite alright. Well, I did have one cat that was pretty good about going in anything I wanted her to go in. Hmm. Inclu including a shopping cart once. Oh, wow. So, A, why would you get a sh cat into a shopping cart? Because we went, to the, we went to, to the vet and I needed to go do some shopping and I had a choice. I took the cat shopping with me or I took the cat home and then had to wait for a whole hour to then go back on a bus to go in. And uh, the sign said, no dogs are left. It didn't mention anything about cats. So I took the cat shopping. Well, that... <laughs> <laughs> they changed the sign afterwards to say no pets allowed. <laughs> well, but it was the sign in Braille. Um, no, but it was rather large, and even I could see it even with my limited vision. Um, ah, okay, so you wouldn't have that excuse. Me, on the other hand, I'd be able to say, well, I, I didn't see no sign that said no... Uh... Well, I kind of said that they said, you can't bring a cat in here. I said, I didn't see a sign that said cats aren't allowed. They said, it's, it's in great big front on the door. And I said, I saw a sign that said no dogs allowed. She's not a dog. Does this look like a dog? Hopefully she didn't choose that moment to start barking, but... Uh... Oh, and she had trouble meowing even, actually. Um, <laughs> well, that um, doesn't help your case, Patch, but... <laughs> 
Um, but she just kind of like that. <laughs> and they're like, see, it's a cat. Um, but yeah, they changed the sign afterwards, and afterwards it said no pets allowed. Well, <laughs> there's still some workarounds on that, but why don't we see if anybody has any actually questions on what we've done so far. I've added in the second uh, thing of flour. And let me tell you, this dough is becoming a lot stiffer. Oh my goodness. We were talking about exercising on ACB Presents this morning, and I'm getting a workout just with this dough, let me tell you. Hey, I'm sticking to what I said. I exercise my right not to exercise unless it's exercising my mind. Very good. So there are no questions currently in Zoom. Thanks, Desi. Are there as anybody left in house. Zoom? All right. We might have scared people away between the... Either that or they're too busy laughing to raise their hands. I don't know. Yep. So, I guess, but the workaround with the pets issue is because they don't actually say no animals. They just say no pet. So, you could still bring the cat in and let them prove that it's actually your pet. Yeah. Not just some, some stray cat you decided to bring in and take shopping with you. I mean... Well, actually, that particular cat, there's no way I could have disputed it was my pet because she would actually sit on my shoulder. Um, so, yeah. But mm. Either she was a stray that really, really liked me or she was my cat. So, yeah. <laughs> yep. All right, guys. And if so if you shop at that local store now and you wonder why there's no pets allowed, you know who to blame. And... <laughs> So I guess we, but we can keep this cooking related. So you said the cat would walk into anything you point her to. So uh, would she walk into an oven? Probably. That was Actually, on. Yeah, she would have. I, she, she was not the brightest of cats. Hmm. I mean, I, I'm talking about a cat who I've got a photo of her that I took during that shopping trip where she's amongst all the groceries and not even attempting to eat any of them. <laughs> Oh, what a strange cat. Um, I think your cat had issues, man. <laughs> she really did. Um, she was a fluffy cat, and my husband always said she was all fluff and no stuff. I can believe it. All right, so. We have some bread coming along. <laughs> it's hard work. So I'm now going to use a wooden spoon rather than the metal spoon because that'll a wooden spoon has a longer handle and I'm not like in the dough while trying to stir it. Unfortunately, the wooden spoon is a little bit harder to work with. So at guys, you point, know at this point I usually just switch to using my hands. I I can think I'm going to do that too. So remember, guys, there was a time when people actually have to use to do this if they wanted bread. There was no going to the store and buying a pre-made loaf. It was, uh, you made the uh, bread by hand like this. And, uh, or you at least, maybe if you were lucky, you could go to the baker's. But, uh, if you could you afford to. If you could afford to. Now you can buy See, it, or you can just shove everything in a machine and make it do the work, or... Exactly. And, uh... I think I like the idea of the machine doing the work myself for this one. I, I, I just gotta say... Okay, so I'm just kind of turning the dough around in the bowl, making sure that this flour gets absorbed into the sticky part of the dough. And then we're going to do our last cup of flour. I'm going to wash off my hands here. So believe it or not, while we've been joking around and all that, I actually have been working and uh, doing productive work here. So believe it or not. I believe it. We can hear all the noise you're making. All right. And 
See, that's why I have to have my original sound on, is, you know, so that way you all know that I'm working, because you, you might not think so otherwise, and get the right impression. So, all right, and last two cups of flour. The one advantage with the one cup of flour would have been I would have had an easier time scooping it out the thing, but. That's okay. Okay, so now I'm going to use my hand again to just get all the loose flour into the dough. And then I believe I need to, after this is flattened out, I think we need to cover this and let it rise. Yep. So you, you need to put it, if you've got a, a spot in your, uh, that's particularly warm, go and put it there. All right. Well, we've got a heater. Does that work? Yeah. I have done things including heating something in the microwave and then putting it, the bowl in the microwave after that. Um, using the oven for something, turning the oven off and then putting it in there. Putting it in front of storage heaters. Um, so, yeah. All right. Basically, if it's in a nice warm place, it's going to rise quicker. And better. So. I should have thought about the oven method because I actually did use it. Is it still warm? Well, the oven just might work because I did use it earlier, but. Uh, what was it like when we were on ACB Presents kind of time frame? Yes. Yeah, it'll be warm enough because you just don't want it to be cold in there. That's all. So, yeah. No. It could be warmer, it but it's... Because you don't want it no. to be too warm in there also to try and bake anyway. You just want it to have a nice, warm, cozy spot. So, yeah. That would work. All right. So, this is an interesting uh, dough here. So, I'm just kind of absorbing that flour into it. And now, I'm just going to press down... And uh, so we're just going to press down on this thing and then we are going to cover it with some foil and let her rise. And then, I don't know about you all, but it's time for that second cup of coffee. I think I've earned it after this, so let me tell you. You can have my cup. All right, well. But yeah, I think you've earned a cup of coffee. If I could find my saran wrap, that would work even better, but I think I don't have any here. Don't at the moment, which is really... A pity. All right. So before we go on to more general comments, does anybody have any questions on what we've done so far? And we will start with Zoom. There are no are no questions at this time. All right. Yep. And no raised hands in Clubhouse. Very good. So, um, I'm going to well, you cover... Well, you open it up in, for general comments and stuff then? Yep, just in just a second. I'm just going to cover the bowl with foil. And then we're going to just kind of make sure it's really covering it. So that way it'll help the yeast rise. And then I'm going to set it inside the oven, which is still warm, and let her rise. I think it's for 30 minutes. I'll double yeah, check for the, the recipe. Yeah, this one's 30 minutes, yeah. yeah. Yep. And now we will open it up to general comments. And Heidi, I want to start with you because you had a comment on the salt shaker. Hi, guys. Hi, Heidi. 
what we usually do is if we're filling a salt shaker, we have a little contraption, a funnel. Ah, uh, yeah, yes. <laughs> the, the lovely funnel. The lovely and funnel, oh, yes. And you always put it over something just in case. Yep. Yeah, yep. funnel, something yeah. under it to catch the spills. Yep. And also do it slowly. Yep. Now my favorite all... kind of funnel is funnel cake, I, I must tell you, but... Uh... <laughs> uh, no, <laughs> not funnel cake. Different kind of fun. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. But if you also want funnel cake, then you can have funnel cake, but that's not going to help you with your salt. Oh. Oh, well, glad we got that cleared up. All right, and Abraham has his hand. Up. Abraham! Hello, Abraham. Hi. Right, so when you need it, you just need it till a smooth, thick, uh, acidic. Yeah. Just and, knead it um, until everything's it... all well blended and you get a, a, a smoothish dough. And um, does it say uh, whether it's doubled in size or something like that? Or is it just a thing? Um, for this particular one, you just leave it to... Um, rise for about 30 minutes it it might double in size it might not get quite that big um but then okay. afterwards we'll be leaving it to rise again and then it needs to double in size oh okay okay anybody in club uh, diane no ma'am all right Anybody else in Zoom? No, sir. All right. So what we're going to do here is uh, I'm going to head back to my uh, the table over here. And I will tell you what we're going to do after we let it rise. How much of this will be able to get done on the call? Not much, but uh, that's how these things go. But we will post the recipe to the cook's list afterwards. Yep. So what we're going to do is place it in a bowl to rise. And it says drizzle it in a bit of melted butter and let it coat. I don't know how much a bit is, so we'll use a good bit, which is quite a bit. It depends on personal preference, really. Um, just like however much you think is a is a reasonable amount of drizzle, basically. So probably about a, a tablespoon or so. Right, and then we're gonna let it sit again for another full hour and let it. To, this time it will double in size. Mm -hmm. And then it says then we're gonna split the dough in half and place the dough on the counter. And it should not stick because of the butter. It has not seen my counters. Roll it into yeah, a 12 they, inch they square. Say it, they say it shouldn't stick, but yeah, okay. Good luck with that. It does. Yeah, I know. Yeah, it does. It, just bear that in mind. <laughs> yeah. I think I'm going to use a cutting board just to be safe anyway. I uh, always use a cutting board. Just Yeah. Yeah. So then after that, we're going to roll it into a 12-inch square. Yeah, I, I mentioned that part. We're going to roll it up jelly roll style and then seal it up tight. Turn it seam side down and then repeat with the other half. No, I never would have guessed that. Place oh, them yeah. in greased loaf pans and cover. Let them proof again for another 30 minutes. And then we'll bake them for 440 minutes at 425 degrees. Keep an eye on them. I don't, the hot, okay, we'll talk about that in a second. Remove them from everyone and place them on a rack to cool. Guys, here's the problem with keeping an eye on them. I only have two eyes. So if I put an eye on each of these things, then I have no eyes. But at least if you had an eye on each of them, you have enough eyes to keep an eye on the bread. Yes. So uh, that is what we're my, going my to do. My husband doesn't Her tell me to keep an eye on Herbie, we do anymore. have a hand um, here in right. Zoom, and that is Elizabeth. 
Elizabeth, hey, welcome. You can go ahead and speak, Elizabeth. Okay, hi. Okay, that finally is. worked. There we go. We have delays this morning. Yes. Um, you could, instead of turning it into loaves at this point, turn it into rolls, maybe the size of a small saucer or even smaller. Yeah. I and gonna... put them on a greased cookie sheet and bake them. The other thing that you can do is after the part of the first rise, suppose you decided you didn't want one, you, maybe you didn't want all that bread, or two, you didn't want the bread at all. If you put it in the refrigerator, it will slow it down, and you can keep it there for a week and pull out bits and make rolls, which is really handy. You know, chuck it in yeah. a Ziploc bag, leave the bag open, and then you could make a couple of rolls for breakfast in the morning instead of all the bread. Or you can throw the whole thing in the freezer and then thaw it out later again, or, you know, or part of the dough, say, whatever. Yeah, if so you're going to do it in the freezer, then, you know, if you split it and then put it into baggies and then you can just get it out as you want to. Yeah, it. split it into small enough baggies so you've got like a small Ziploc of dough. You only have to let it rise a little bit initially um i'm not even sure you have to do that before you freeze no it. you don't because the thing is you'd be baking it anyway and you'd need to put right. the extra bit of time for the baking because of making sure it's defrosted and, it, and so that would it would then right rise. right i i just freeze dough all the time and because otherwise you really have too much of it and it's a long process and this and way so you much can bread you eat. drag it well you don't want it stale this way you can get it fresh leaving some dough in the refrigerator and having rolls during the week where you have a couple of rolls that you've baked up fresh is a great thing and i sent tori a recipe that's not the same as this that may be valuable that people can use that's sort of fun and cute um and this yeah. is a cool, it's, it's, bread is fun to make and it's really hard to mess it up. And it smells um, really, really good. It's, it's great. Fresh. People love it when you make bread around them. It's better than the stuff you buy in the grocery store. And if you've got kids around, they can do the, they can watch the whole thing happen over, you know, anywhere from four hours to three days. Um, yeah. And so it's, it's a, it's a really... I don't know. There's something yeah. really fun about making it. Yes. Thanks, Liz. Before we go on to other hands, I just want to say, yes, I have used this dough to make um, rolls. I've also used the same dough um, to make pizza bases out of um, just by rolling some out really, really thin. Um, and uh, I've used them, used it for... Um, like adding extra stuff to make like fruit loaves, for example, because you can add raisins or whatever to it, or nuts to make a nut loaf or whatever. It's pretty versatile. Diana has her hand up. All right, Diana. <clears throat> Hi. Um, I have a question for the lady, for Elizabeth, that just, uh, just spoke a moment ago. <clears throat> if you leave... Uh, part of the dough in an open Ziploc bag in the refrigerator and you can make the rolls individual or, you know, like a couple at a time. When you put those in the pan, do you need to let them rise for a little while before you put them in the oven or can you? Yeah, no, you take the, you take the, the dough out. The thing about dough is if you've got it in the refrigerator, you pull off a piece and you're going to start to understand how big a piece you need for your rolls when right. you get used to doing this, pull out a piece and put it in a bowl and let it come up to room temperature and then form it into rolls. Um, and then you can let the rolls rise, but don't handle, don't start messing around with the dough until it's warmed up out of the refrigerator. Give it, you know, half an hour, 45 minutes out of the refrigerator It'll rise a little bit, but not much. And then you can shape it into rolls when it's um, room temperature and let them rise the full time. And it's just a way of stopping 
of slowing down the yeast process. The thing about yeast is it's a living thing. And if you yep. put it in the refrigerator, all you're going to do is deepen the yeast flour flavor and get it more towards what sourdough is, which mm -hmm. is not what we're making, but that's the, the thing yeah, there. But that's, and, but that's a way to do it. Yeah, It's a way to do it. And you, um, I mean, you could take out a little bit and and do and warm it up to room temperature, and then add Tories nuts and raisins and cinnamon and make raisin cinnamon buns. There are all kinds of fun little yeah. things to do. And having a Ziploc bag of of the kind of of this kind of dough in the refrigerator it lets you do that. Also, if you want to switch out some of some or all of the whole wheat flour of the I, I, will deal flour. With, I will deal oh, with you'll deal with that later okay, good. Stuff I'm, in a I'm sorry yeah. I, I promise not yeah. to become um yeah. it's it, this is people who like making bread really get into it it's like yeah. craft okay thank you Liz thank you very much all right. Do we and, have any other any questions for us or for any other uh, our uh, other callers? And, uh, yeah. First of all, do we have any in Clubhouse? Uh, no yeah. hands in Clubhouse. Okay, anyone else in all Zoom? All right. Nobody in Zoom. Okay. So as Liz started to touch on, um, you can switch out some or all of the flour um, for a alternative if you want either whole wheat bread or half and half bread, or if you want to completely make it gluten-free and use a gluten-free flour alternative, that is definitely an option. You can also, um, although it just it just says sugar, you can use um, whichever kind of sugar you'd prefer to. Like most people would use the regular white refined sugar, you can easily use the um, unrefined cane sugar if you prefer to use that. Um, you can switch out your uh, butter for a dairy-free alternative. Um, like I said, it's a very versatile recipe because it is so um, basic that it's really flexible, which is why I like doing it. I got it off of somebody um, when blogging was really, really big um, and the main way that people were doing things for social media for a while um, I followed quite a few blogs and one of them gave me this recipe so I've been using it most of my adult life um, so like and like I said you can mix it up however you want substitute ingredients depending on allergies preferences etc all right very good. And the other thing I was going to ask is, um, so Liz mentioned sending you an alternative bread recipe. Does that batter, does that flour call for black beans instead of uh, flour? Beans? No, it doesn't. No, it's one where you don't do um, so much of the, um, so much mixing initially um, until you've got everything in there. I haven't, looked at it thoroughly because I haven't had a chance um, but it's um, just basically a different process of coming to the same result with almost identical ingredients from what very I can see from good, the very good very good none right. of the bread recipes and I have involve black beans instead of flour alright <laughs> Uh, they don't involve black beans, but you know, okay, what about black birds? And can they be baked into a pot? Oh, wait a minute. Not in my kitchen, they can't. Okay. That's interesting. I never realized this. They actually use the numbers four and twenty blackbirds. I wonder. And oh, never mind. Okay, um, we won't go down certain rabbit holes on this call, but. Uh, do Moving we have on, any other questions? Does <laughs> yeah. he? We we have no hands in Zoom. So. Diane. Okay, she she remember she she's horrified over what she's hearing, guys. So we we gotta be uh, no hands, um, no house. Very good. <coughs> so we're just waiting for. We're waiting for the uh, thing to uh, rise. I think we'll have enough time 
for it to finish rising and deal with the melted butter before we end the call today. And uh, so that will be good. And so we'll at least get a good part of this done and then I'll let it rise for another hour and we'll put just put it back in the oven and um, that'll probably be good. And then I will bake it and uh, tell you all about how it turned out next week. So uh, you'll want to stay tuned for that. And speaking of next week, well, what goes well with bread but soup? And uh, who better to tell us about soup than uh, Liz, you might think? Nope, actually, that was a couple weeks ago. But Belinda is going to talk to us about dill pickle soup. So, and Which is uh, different and was um, requested because everyone was interested in it after she mentioned it on ACP Presents. Yep. Uh, so that reminds me, we need to get a hold of her and uh, get the ingredients uh, list. And Diana, I have a wonderful. Excuse me, Diana has her hand up. All right, Thank Diana. You, mm-hmm. Yeah, <clears throat> I have a question for you. You're not out of it yet. Mm-hmm. You mentioned that you can even make like pizza crusts out of it. I've wanted to do that for years and years, and like have them in the freezer, like little individual ones, uh, mm-hmm. and have them in the freezer and have them be thin crust pizzas. How do you go? What's the process for that? And can you, can you roll them out first and then freeze them? And I mean, yeah, I roll them out first. So what I do basically is I get it to the point where they're saying about um, making them into the jelly rolls and putting them in the um, um, tray in the bread in the bread loaf in the loaf pans. But instead of doing that, I will roll them out. Um, like I tend to want my crusts thinner, so I roll them out pretty thin. Um, and then I essentially put together a pizza and then wrap it in uh, something to put, like, usually I use tinfoil, to be honest, and I put it in the freezer. And then when I am ready to cook it, I just cook it from frozen. Oh, just so like that. I literally just pull it out, unwrap it from the foil, stick it on a pizza tray and cook it. Oh, so you put the toppings on it and everything. Okay. Yep. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't think about that part. I just thought about the crust and then doing the It's, it's a good way to have um, quick and easy pizzas um, because yeah. w- with my dietary requirements, it's a lot easier for me to get pizza if I make it myself. But making pizza from scratch is exhausting. Um, mm-hmm. So what I tend to do is I'll make up a batch of the bread so that I can make up a few pizzas at a time when I want pizza. And then one of them, I will, um, when I've put it all together, put straight in the oven. And then there'll be at least one other pizza that I will put in the freezer and cook some other time so some other time i will technically have frozen pizza for dinner but it's because i made it myself before yeah and it's gonna taste a lot better than frozen uh, from the store (laughs) it is it's a lot better i can have it with stuff that i can eat and also done to my preferences with stuff i like to eat so yeah yeah okay thank you okay we have a raised hand let me see if i can Okay, we have a race in Clubhouse. Let's get to that then. All right. Yeah, before they run away. Um, Yeah, it's um, Cheryl, good night. And Cheryl, you will need to double tap your join button. And then, you know, once you're on stage, you need to double tap your um, unmute button. All right, Cheryl, good night. Good morning. Good afternoon. Okay, Cheryl, you're you're on stage now, so go ahead. Hi, Cheryl. Go ahead and unmute, Cheryl. Again, you should have an. Maybe unmute since button. it's a cooking call, we should put some um, some um, sprinkles on the unmute button for her. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Instead of and sparkly and things, put actual sprinkles. Like yeah. in the lower right corner of your screen, if you're on an iPhone. Yep. But just watch you hit unmute and not dismiss. Can y'all hear me? Yeah, hey. we can yes. hear you now. Yes, I'm so sorry. I'm still trying to get comfortable with Clubhouse. We're, we're, we're just it's letting okay. Joe rise, so don't feel bad. We're, 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 you're good. Okay, because I usually get on Zoom, but this morning I, I ran a little late, and so I just I was at the breakfast table, and I thought, I'll do this on Clubhouse today. 
Awesome. So, so I'm really, but b- before we get to your question, I just want to say I'm really glad you brought that up because that is one of the reasons why it's good to have these calls on Clubhouse because sometimes it's just a lot easier to join that way. So I'm really glad that you took advantage mm-hmm. of that, Cheryl. All right, go ahead with your uh, question. Okay, I wrote into the ACB community and they said to join the ACB club uh, to watch this again. Well, how do I do that? I mean, uh, in order for me to get this on Clubhouse, am I already a member of the AC, ACB club? So, Did you um, receive a notification it, when the room was opening? I, yeah, I got a notification on my phone that y'all were... Uh, that y'all were right, doing then this. yes, you are a member of the ACB club. Yes. Okay, so how do okay. I go... So if you how, go into... act uh, On your home page on when you first open clubhouse if you go to activities it'll say replays are ready to listen to and you click on that and you, it, you, bring up, excuse me. Um, Sorry, you go you do what now you go to activities yes active it says activity and then it'll say um x amount of replays are ready to listen to and then you click on that and one of them will be herbie's cooking corner Okay, so will uh, all of the stuff that, that y'all have done be on that same location? Um, the one, eh. the, the, like, the most recent one, definitely. And if you go through your activities, then you might find the other ones. But if you want to listen to them all, your best bet is to follow the link for YouTube, the YouTube playlist in the email. Okay, so how do I go to the YouTube uh, link? Is that going to be in the ACB Cooks email? So the, the it's going YouTube to link be is in, in the community events email. Yep. In the YouTube link the is listed schedule in every email. email. Is it? It's it's in every email in the, of the, in the daily schedule. Okay, every so Tuesday. Get- Okay, so I've got the schedule for today, which is Tuesday. So Mm -hmm. where do I go to find the YouTube links of this? In the description of Herbie's Cookie and Corner. Okay, in that little section under that heading, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you have the YouTube link. And there should be a YouTube link there, yes. Okay. Okay. So if I want to go back and look at previous YouTube links that y'all have done, do I just go to YouTube.com and write in Herbie's you, Cooking Corn? If you click on the link that's in today's email, it will take you to a playlist where you will see the previous episodes. Okay. I'll do that. All right. Thank you all so much. And I appreciate your patience with me because uh, I uh, only got back really deep into technology in 2020. Because I took my, care of my late mother for about seven years. So okay. I was, I was kind of stifled and held back there for a while. So mm-hmm. I really I really love the ACB community. I've, I've learned so much. Well, I hope that's helped and that you managed to get to mm-hmm. listen to the old episodes. Yeah, and um, we, um, we, we love having you as well. I do want to mention another useful link, by the way, guys, that you also will find in the email is a link to a Dropbox folder where I include text copies of most of the recipes that I've done. I do them in text format so that way you don't need any specialized software like Microsoft Word or anything like that to read them. Excuse me. They so, are also on the ACB cooks list. Yes, and so we we try our best to make sure that you can find the stuff as easily as possible. So you have multiple options, guys. And, so uh, um, on the recipes in your Dropbox, now where is that located? In which part of the email is it in the ACB? So same, remember, same so, place. So when you look at a call description, guy, on the community emails, and I'll explain this in case we have any media listeners who have not you uh, looked at the community list either. So. When you look at, or a clubhouse people, when you look at a community call, everything is contained within the uh, call description that a uh, call provider wants you to have. So like in mine, you're going to see several links. There is the link to my YouTube channel. There is the link to the Dropbox folder. 
And then there's the link to also joining Clubhouse as well as the uh, Zoom link. So um, it's always good to look at these call descriptions and they will give you all that information. And I know sometimes it can be really, it, it can be a little bit of a challenge on the phone. And, um, but if you just read line by line, you'll see everything there. And it's, it, it really is well spelled out. Okay, so, and in, the email, um, in the email like that I received for today's events? Yes. Okay. Yes. So if you go to the heading that says Herbie's Cooking Corner, you're going to see all the links that I mentioned. Okay, and you spell your name H-E-R-B-Y, right? No, I-E. I-E. But that won't matter when you're looking for the email anyway, so. Okay, and you spell your last name A-L-L-E-N? Yes. But that's not going to help you with finding the email, so. Yeah, but I was just thinking if I went to YouTube and looked at your YouTube channel. Yep, you can try searching for the playlist that way. It is a playlist, and um, because it's a playlist contained within my channel, because I run several different things over on YouTube. Which will be why she's saying about uh, needing to spell your name, because you'd need to find your channel to do it that way. Yep. So if the if you can't find it under Herbie's Cooking Corner, then look for Herbert Allen, and there you'll see my channel, which will have several playlists: uh, Herbie's Cooking Corner, Let's Talk Mac, and uh, Mac Demos. So um, there's a couple of ways of finding me over on the YouTube, but that's okay. why I put the link in there so that way. You've... Yeah, well, I'll Makes read it. More, I'll be it. I'll read it more carefully. I would. I've just been kind of in a hurry. That's okay. Yep. Okay, Cheryl, I'm going to move you um, back fine. into the audience now. That's fine. Thank you so much for your answer to my questions. Okay. You're welcome. Anybody else on Zoom? No hands currently. All right. And did, the other hand. Did we completely? Clubhouse. Did we completely derail your train of thought, or do you, do you remember what you were going to say? I don't remember what I was going to say. Oh, I do remember what I was going to say. Oh, yes. Sorry, Tori. <laughs> as, as my wonderful assistant, I think it's your job to track down the victims. I mean, the guest speakers and, uh, and make sure that uh, they get us everything that uh, we need and all that. Uh... True, oh, I'm but, it's you, but it's you who puts the details in for the calls, so it's you that needs the information quickest. Uh, yeah, but so I need somebody to get me the details, so. <laughs> well, I will remind her to contact you with details. All right. How's that? Well, I do. I, it sounds good. Though I do intend to go on the breakfast bunch as well afterwards, so I should have an opportunity. So you can call I, her. I know where I to mean, find her. talk to her. Exactly. Coffee, coffee clutch. Yeah. Why do I call it the breakfast? <laughs> I don't know. I, I do really don't. You must think I know. I. <laughs> Or are you just thinking about breakfast? Yep. Yeah, I think so. Uh, anyway, both the breakfast bunch and the coffee clatch are two calls that you should check out. And if you want to hear more of me, you've also got me this Thursday for Let's Talk Mac, where I will be talking about what to expect on your Mac. What? Tomorrow. And tomorrow, yes, tomorrow. It's accessible online games. Where we'll be playing uh, Monopoly in Quincy's game room. I'm glad somebody reminded me. That would have been embarrassing to forget about your own call. Hey, Herbie, um, Liz, Liz has her hand up. Okay, Liz. Well, why not, before we get to you, Liz, I also mentioned, and of course, uh, I am the tune spinner over on karaoke, and lately I've been submitting songs for that as well. So, okay, Liz. Well, thank you. That's great. I don't know how you, I mean, I, I don't know when he sleeps. It's amazing. Um, <laughs> So oh, I do if, need my beauty rest. Have no fear. If you got, if suppose you had um, a big amount of dough in your refrigerator and you wanted, and you didn't have any yeast and you wanted to make some other kind of bread or more bread or whatever, you could take a piece of that dough out, get it to room temperature and add that dough to additional flour and water and use the dough piece instead of yeast um, and make more or different dough. And, you know, you could add eggs to it and make challah or there's all kinds of yep. variations, but you don't necessarily need yeast. So that's one thing. In case, so 
it's old. In case you find out that, for instance, you either run out of yeast or if you find those little envelopes of yeast are really expensive, you can buy pounds of yeast for really inexpensive. And if you're a bread person, you can take the pound of yeast, which comes in this foil um, can thing, and you just put it in a container and put that in your freezer and take out a bit when you need it. One package is about a tablespoon, roughly. So one thing um, I do want so to mention. That might help. Yeah, one thing I'll mention though, when considering the expensive stuff, sometimes how often you buy it is really going to con contribute to the expense. For instance, um, you know, if you're considering a package of yeast versus a jar of yeast, let's say. The package of yeast is like $2 and the jar of yeast is $1. Yes, the package is more expensive, but are you going to use the yeast on a weekly basis or is it just a once in a while thing? And that yes. can really this is why determine. I get yes. those, this is why I get those little um, package things, the little envelopey things, because yes. I, I don't make my own bread all the time because I just cannot. Yep. I would like to. But I'm just, yes. it's just not something I can do. I agree. Keep it in the freezer, though, because it'll last longer if I you buy three packages. I only have a small packages. freezer, so I can only keep Well, if you can, freezer. if you can. Yeah. You yeah. keep so, it in the freezer or the refrigerator as opposed to your kitchen cupboard somewhere. You keep it as cold as possible, and it'll stay longer. And yeah. And right. you could get, you could make one package turn into a lot of, a lot of, um, potential dough just by giving it flour and water over a two or three day period and letting it rise. So that's a, another way of oh, yeah. economizing. Well, you can make a cookie dough could, or something like that. I mean, you can also, if you've got absolutely no yeast and you make up the, re uh, like you've got all the rest of it ready and you were going to make some bread and you've got absolutely no yeast and you haven't got any dough, you could just make flat bread. Absolutely. But you certainly want the, you, you certainly want the uh, yeast though, because, um, you know, the flour is going to be certain as the sun rising in the yeast. So, oh, oh, wait a minute. And that joke fell flat. I know, I know. Yeah. <laughs> what? I want flatbread. You want flatbread? Okay. Yeah. Well, Flatbread's pretty easy to make. Yeah. I guess we'll have to find them. I guess, well, you can find me a flatbread recipe and we'll make that on a future call. We'll consider that an official request. All right, okay. so I guess we're making flatbread at some point. So there you go. Um, April. <laughs> All right. So now we know what we're doing into April. All right. Okay, who is next? I wasn't talking to you. Okay, Google wants to say something. <laughs> well, we don't have any hands right now in Zoom, so so now's a good time for Google to say something. No. Go ahead, Google. <laughs> she she just said something. I didn't quite catch all of it because I was listening to you guys. But uh, do we have anybody over on Clubhouse? No, sir. Oh, um, so you, you forgot. Your, your I forgot to set public. a timer. Yeah, it's yeah that's what I was now. thinking. Yeah. So we're going to take this out of the oven and get our butter melted and did I put my butter back in the fridge? I don't think I did. Uh, I did. Where I did you put it? it? Oh, nope, I did. I it, I left it out because I, I knew I was going to need it again and uh, yeah. All right. So let's get... Okay, I don't need an oven mitt for an oven that's not on, first of all. No comments. Um, well, it's better to grab an oven, oven mitt when you don't need them, one than not grab them when you do. Yes. Okay, so I can tell that the dough does look a little bit bubbly in places where it did not before. So it's definitely doing something. And we're just going to get out a bowl for melting the butter. You know what? My bigger bowl is a lot easier to work with, even though I don't need a bigger bowl. But we're going to use it anyway. And we're going to take out some butter and melt it in the microwave. 
and let's put this butter back in the fridge first of all the tubbed butter and now we're going to find my butter bowl and we're gonna put it in the microwave for about 30 seconds Good to know. It is, isn't it? But it's what you expect of a talking microwave. It talks to you or talks back we to you. We had a cooking which... microwave. You had uh, a cooking microwave? Uh, the talking microwave, I mean. Um, we, I mean, I was yeah, going to had... say, I thought that was the idea of a microwave. <laughs> no, we had, we had a talking microwave, but uh, one of my cooking disasters killed it. Oh, dear. All right, how to kill a microwave. Tori can tell us all about that. Tori and Chanel will tell us all the things they've done with their microwaves, including uh, Basically, the, uh, some, uh, I was defrosting some sausages. I was told I could defrost them in the microwave, but nobody told me that you're supposed to do it gradually and turn them regularly. Oh, no. Um, well, I, I was defrosting them for my brother. He wanted sausage sandwiches, and I asked my mom before she went away, you know, can I defrost these sausages? She said, yes, just put them in the microwave. You can defrost them that way. She neglected to mention about the turning. She also told me, oh, it'll probably take about 10 minutes. So the sausages were inedible. Uh, the microwave was... Um, and yeah, it didn't work very well afterwards. And there was so much smoke that the next door neighbor had smoke in their house. Oh boy. Uh, yeah. So that's uh, we maybe we need to do a call on microwave safety. Also, how you answer cooking questions can really matter. Yes. Because uh, yes, I you don't... can. I I don't use the microwave to defrost stuff if I can help it. No. I don't blame me. <laughs> now, me personally, I would not have even defrosted the sausages. I would have just cooked them directly from a frozen state. In my defense, um, I was only 13. Oh. Well, that is a valid defense, then. Yeah. yeah, I was only 13, and I was listening to my mom. See, this is why I don't listen to my mother. Exactly. All right. Guys, if you want an excuse not to listen to your mother... Uh, One time I did as I was told. I <laughs> killed the microwave. <laughs> yep. Okay, so... Kind of... You know, I th think I could use a little bit more butter, actually. Because it's there you kind go. of... I had a bit more. I had enough on one side, but not enough for the other side. Um, the one time you should listen to your mother, though, is if she tells you... Not to go to a wild party. Uh, that, that, that one you should probably listen to her advice on. Just ask a Three Dog Night and a Randy Newman. Uh, um, well, I was not the wild party type. Um, so there'd been more chance of her trying to tell me to go to one and me saying no. So ah. I was the can't I stay home instead type of behavior. Ah, so... There was no good advice for you to listen to your mother, too, and, uh... Yeah. It was great All for right. me, for friends of hers who had kids, though, because I'd, uh, cause if they gave me the choice between going out or babysitting, I'd say, how long do you want me to watch the kids for? Yeah, but then they'd probably let you do it for free, too, you know. See, see, yeah. you gotta manipulate the system, make it act like you want to go out, but, you know, maybe, you know, a little bit of uh, money could persuade you me. to stay. They, they knew me too well. And actually, there uh, was usually money, even if I didn't ask for anything. I usually got something. Oh, well, there you go. And I got to play with kids, so, you know. You know, I, I just realized that Hope Tyan's kids aren't listening to this, because they might get some ideas. Well, I think Tayan left, so it's probably a good thing. <laughs> that probably is, but does she just leave? You know, does she leave now or earlier? You know. 
Um, she, she left earlier. I don't know if she came back. I mean, we like Tyan being here, but yeah, I don't want to give Arya and Lois uh, ideas. <laughs> no. And your dogs sound like so have the, some thoughts on the subject. Yep. But, uh, yeah, I mean, you just got to be careful the, how you give advice, because, yes, she, to, her mom is right. You can defrost sausages in the microwave, but uh, there is an art to but defrosting. Not, by just, not just by putting them in for ten minutes, though. Exactly. They were not frozen. I can tell you that for a fact. No. And I can tell you for a fact that by playing with this dough, I noticed part of my yeast package got into the dough. So, uh, glad I discovered that before cooking. Yes. And then see, if I hadn't decided to add more butter, I wouldn't have noticed it. So. This is well, you thought okay. you needed more butter. Yep. All right, so we're going to make sure this is all nicely coated, and then we're going to flatten it out again. And now I should expect the dough to really double in size but this you time. For about an hour. It... Yep. So don't forget, guys, there are some other great calls happening today on the community as well. You've got, uh, I was about to say ACB Presents. That's already happened. But Unmute Presents. Let's call, try that though. one. Yep, it was. And I imagine they're going to be talking about uh, everybody's new dream toy, the Victor Reader Stream 3. So there will probably be a discussion on that, I'm guessing. Um. I'm, well, I thought the Victor Reader stream the, fir the first one anyway. I think it's the first one. Yeah, I, d I had a first one too, but I, I'll d I mean, truthfully, folks, I'll tell you, honestly, I kissed those extra devices goodbye the day they introduced Bard on the phone. And uh, I was like, yep, I don't like don't reading need it. on my phone. <sighs> do you want to know why I don't like reading on my phone? Why do you not like reading on your phone? Because every time I try to, somebody phones me and interrupts my book. And so they just so they know if you're reading on your phone versus your Victor Reader. Well, if, if the thing is, if they if they phone me when I'm listening on my Victor Reader, then I can manage to um, multitask enough to pay attention to both. But if they phone me when I'm listening to a book on the phone, it stops reading my book. Uh, but you can still get the book to play back once you're on the phone call. Just use headphones and. Uh... But I don't. But yes, but I don't want to. Plus, but then you have an... sometimes when I'm listening to a book, I like to play Dice World, and um, the um, ads for the bonus rolls interrupt my book as well. And plus, it's hard to hear both of them on the same device. So. Could you turn okay, on? Okay, I must disturb? admit, I usually don't. Yeah, I was going to say for the phone call part at least, just turn on Do Not Disturb and the tough luck of the people calling you. Hey, that's what voicemail is for. <laughs> uh, no, I, if I turn on Do Not Disturb, then my mom just calls the other phone. Well, disconnect the other phone and she can't call it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can deal with her if I do that, okay? <laughs> oh, I'll deal with her. All right, hey, first of all, you gave your daughter some really bad advice back when she was 13. So, why should she listen to you today? I don't know. And neither does she, which is why she's disconnected her other phone and has Do Not Disturb on her regular phone so she can read her books in peace. So, there. There. I dealt with her. You, you can just play Feel that recording better? for a safe time. No. Oh, okay. Should we see if well, we have any hands? What? Maybe we should. Does he, Diane? There, there no are no hands. No one in Zoom. No one in Zoom. And um, we have just a few seconds until it's 10 minutes before the end of the call. Okay. All right. So I put the bread back in the oven. Hey, Google, set timer for one hour. Sure. One hour. 
Starting now. And it helps to set the timer so you know what you're doing. Does. Okay, it is ten minutes till the end of the call. Thank you, Desi. All right. Welcome. Thank you. Never would have guessed that since it was a few seconds before. No. Anyway. She's just doing her job. Yeah, one of these days I'm going to change things up a little bit. I'm going to have a, make the clubhouse moderator tell me that it's 10 minutes before, just to, just to keep them on their toes. And the... <laughs> they have to stand on their toes for the whole call? That's not very nice. No. Abraham has his think. hand up. That's Abraham. probably good timing. <laughs> but I have, to, I have to stand for this call, too, so, you know, hey. You yes, but it. not on your toes. You get to stand on your whole feet. True. All right, Abraham. Abraham. Um, no, no. Uh, again, um, so I was wondering if anyone has tips on how to manage uh, raising of dough in uh, different environments. Because I hear, uh, uh, like, if, say, in where Tori is, it may be all take an hour to double in size, but where I am, it might take a little less time or a little more time. Um, is there any tips on anything there? Well, to be honest, it doesn't matter if it takes a little bit less time and you've left it a little bit longer. It just means your dough will get yeah. bigger, um, um, really. Uh, but your best bet, really, if you want it to specifically only, do only increase by a certain amount, is to make sure it's somewhere relatively warm and like check on it regularly. So, like for example, it says it says an hour. Um, so you want to at least leave it for half an hour because even if it's quite warm it's going to need that half an hour minimum uh, okay. and then after that see how it's doing and then um if it doesn't look like it's risen much you know it needs the whole half an hour if it looks like it might be pretty close to twice the size already then just give it another say 15 minutes and then check on it again okay um yeah uh, the story of your mother just reminded me of a story with my mother when uh, she just got married um, and stayed with um, my father's family. Uh, she made bread once, and um, since she came from a different city, her uh, bread did not rise <laughs> when she thought it would. So, um, and she was nervous to like tell my um, grandmother. So she like uh, tagged a hole under the in a plant pot and <laughs> buried the dough. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> so days later, um, you, she just saw uh, the um, soil on the ground after the park. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, mothers don't always know. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. So if it's a war if you're in a warmer climate, then check it after 30 minutes and then check it every 15 minutes or so after that. Okay. Uh, if you're in a colder climate, then you know you want to at least leave it for the hour. And then after that, if it hasn't doubled in size, then leave it for a little bit longer. Okay. Thank you. Okay. All right. Any other questions? Lily apparently has some comments, so she's not raising her yes. paw. We have no hands here in Zoom. And we have no hands here in Clubhouse. All right. And uh, yes, Chanel, I will get to your breakfast. I've been lala gigging around here and not serving my wife's breakfast, guys. I'm really a bad husband. What can I say? Um, anyway. Of yourself. I am. Oops, I said whenever it's possible. I recognize you've got lots of stuff It's okay. Going, we're, so. ju we're just messing about, Chanel. You're fine. All right. So one of the things I really mentioned, so I made stroganoff again last night, Courtney stroganoff, and I actually tried the uh, stew meat that Colby had referenced for uh, her beef stew, and it does work really well. So um, it is certainly saved a lot of time not having to cut it. It was already uh, chopped up, so I'm really pleased about that. All right, guys. Well, we're about to wrap things up, so if you do have any questions, now is your final opportunity. Otherwise, we'll be back next week learning about dill pickle soup. 
and uh, also happening later today after Unmute Presents, it's going to be Games to Play with Lady A, Fun with Homophones, and that is a really fun call. I know it doesn't get talked about much, but uh, Mary is a great teacher. And, also, uh, Mary, Yep. Braille Room doesn't get talked about much either. Those calls, uh, Lively Latin, we're also going to have that today, and All Paws on Deck. And let's talk TV. Oh, just a whole slew of calls. But uh, and then tomorrow, accessible online games. And now, see, uh, tomorrow also... people can still go to ACB Presents because it yes, hasn't happened. Yes, they yet. can exactly. And, then and they you can, can now catch up on Media Five as well. What's your question going to be? I'm not telling you. You've got to wait and see. Yeah. You've got to come to ACB Presents. Oh, not even a sneak peek. Okay, well, is it food related? No. Do you even know what your question will be? Actually, yes, I do. I know it's a miracle. All right. Normally, I'm trying to figure it out at the last minute, but no, this time yeah. I've actually had my question for a couple of days. All right. You know, I, I, I just envy <coughs> those of you who facilitate calls that can just come up with questions. And, you know, two people like that actually are Desi and... I was about to say Desi and Diner. Desi and Diane, sorry. Because you've got <laughs> Desi's Diner... <laughs> <laughs> on Friday, and you've got the Thursday night cap with Diane on Thursday evening. And I highly encourage you to check out both of those calls. And uh, the night cap is on Thursday evening at uh, 9 p.m. ACB time. And Desi's Diner is on Friday mornings at 11 a.m. ACB time. And uh, Well, I can't speak I just... for everybody, but I can tell you that in my case, it takes a lot of uh, thinking. And then I usually... Uh, this week's exception, but then I usually decide as I'm as I'm submitting the question. So, <laughs> so, so you must have been really inspired. Then this must be a really inspired question for you to come up with it a lot sooner. Is my guess because, I like like you, I don't have the neck. That's why I do calls like this where I'm doing something rather than leading out a discussion. That's why I like working on the, this cooking call and the crafting calls because there's no need for a question usually. Exactly. You all get to listen instead of talk. Got the other calls for that. But I do encourage you to check out the Thursday Night Cap and Desi's Diner calls if you've not already done so because they are a lot of fun. And Desi's hey, with Desi's Diner, diner more, you get... But I have to go to dinner. But Desi serves dinner. You just tell her what you want and uh, the host you know, yes, serves it up. Yes, but it's virtually food, you know. But it's free food and you can have whatever you want. True. And there are no calories included. Exactly. That's true. So, I mean, it sounds to me like a win-win. I mean, you know, it's my breakfast time too, but you don't see me. That's stopping me from going there. And uh, lately, lately, lately they've been hiring me on actually, I tell you guys, uh, it's really been an interesting ride. One of the job uh, promotions I got last year was, you know, I became one of the cooks at uh, Desi's Diner when they discovered that I could do, do it really well virtually. So... Um, and so they virtually uh, hired you? Yep, they virtually <laughs> hired me. And your stroganoff is on the table. I would have put it on a plate, uh, see. <laughs> it's it's really in a bowl well. on the table. I can't carry go. it from the microwave to the table. <laughs> you just said see it. See, Herbie. Be she has one up to you in the joke, so, you know, it, she has to dish it back. No, dish. I just came up with that right <laughs> <one>. anyway. <laughs> so, um, anyway, and then also, and it'll be interesting, I'll actually be doing, uh, I was going to ask everybody, you know, I was thinking about this, so they've, the uh, Albany chapters asked me to talk to them about Valentine's Day cooking, so trying to figure out what I was thinking I wonder what everybody thought do, do you think chocolate chip cookies works well for Valentine's Day cooking or uh, chocolate chip cookies works well cookies? for any time yeah, absolutely okay and we are just seconds away from the bottom of the hour all right thank you guys thank you Desi da Diane and Deb for uh, streaming thank you, <laughs> yep. yeah streaming moderating and hosting and uh, we will see you all next time. Bye, everybody. Thanks, everybody.
All right, guys, welcome to this YouTube exclusive on what happens with the rest of the bread. So just to recap, even though you've already been listening to this, I put the bread in the oven that is not on, but was recently used to let it to rise for an hour after pouring on the drizzled butter. So we're going to see now how it turned out. And I don't need my oven mitt, I just need to take the bowl out of the oven. It's so strange doing that. But, um, yeah, this dough has definitely risen. And, uh, yeah, it's actually kind of still rising. All right, that makes that uh, easy. So now we're going to actually try to make this into bread. It says you don't need a cutting board. You can just set it directly on the counter. I don't know about that one. I think that uh, we're going to use a cutting board just to be safe. And since even Tori said that's what she does, no problems there. So I've got out my cutting board. And next thing I am going to do is really get the uh, oven going so let's move this bowl out of the way of the oven and we want the oven in question at 425 this is a trickier one to set because of the dial but i know where my 375 is so i'm just going to slant the dial to the right and we'll call it good and maybe it means the bread will cook a little bit less but it's at least well over 400 so I don't think we need to worry there. So what we're going to do now is split the bread in half and put half on the cutting board and half on the leave the half, the half in the bowl. We did not talk about the best way to split the bread in half actually. So I could try to tear it apart. We're going to see if a knife will work to cut it in half. Kind of split it down the middle here. Otherwise... Okay, that's not going to work out, but that's not surprising. So I'm just going to grab what I think is about half. So we're going to just lay it out anyway, so... There, that's a little bit half. I can, I'm kind of guesstimating here, so. Um, there's no easy way without really knowing. So I'm now going to flatten it out. And I probably could use a rolling pin for this if I wanted to, but I think my hands will be more than sufficient. The recipe calls for us to do it for uh, 12 inches of bread. Okay, now we're starting to fall off the cutting board. So I'm going to pick this up and move it a little bit more centered. And I could actually you know what, where is my rolling pin? Uh, I know I have one. So it just might make it a little bit more easier to work with. And okay, I thought I knew where my rolling pin was, but apparently I do not. Okay. Well, put that paper bag in the uh, garbage. I don't need it. So we'll just go back to using my hands. I will wash up since I've been touching uh, dusty cupboards and all that. I was really hoping though to try to use the rolling pin because then make a nicer, stiffer thing to work with since I have to roll it up. Let's try one more cupboard here because I can. 
And I guess the rolling pin is, you're not a rolling pin, you look like a rolling pin, you're like a, but you're not. I guess it's one of those things that's just going to show up when I actually don't need it. And that is unfortunately how things go sometimes. Okay, one other place it could B, I need time for the oven to heat up anyway, so we can do a fruitless search for a fruitless bread. Oh. I really thought I knew where my rolling pen was, but apparently I do not. Well, well, well. maybe that's something I need to invest in again is a new rolling pen. One final place is with my other stuff. But I don't remember seeing it in here. I do you want to bet guys that the thing is going to show up when I'm looking for something else on another cooking call that does not require a rolling pen. Okay, this is your last chance to come out of the closet or cupboard, whatever this is. Eh, no such luck. Alright guys, so if anybody's seen my rolling pin... But, uh, that's how it goes. Okay, so let's go back over to the sink and wash up again. And I'm going to flatten out the dough more. And dry off, obviously. But, uh, all right, we're going to go back to our dough here and just flatten it out really really thin and try to make it as even as we possibly can and then I'm going to get out the loaf pan next it calls for it to be greased and so since we're using a lot of it anyway I will just use some melted butter I think it would go really well with this bread dough to add some flavor is uh, olive oil but uh, Okay, so now that uh, that is flattened out here, yay, all right. And I don't really have a good way of knowing if it's 12 inches or not, but it's big enough for our purposes. So now I'm going to roll it back up into a jelly roll and kind of squeeze the ends in so we have us a little uh, it's just you know long bread roll you've if you've seen a bread loaf you'll have an idea of what it's supposed to look like so I've got two loaf pans here and I'm going to get out and I do know where those are in fact I actually saw them earlier today so I know that they are here but now they are eluding me. You've got to be kidding. There they are. Alright. When you don't have things organized, it can make things a little bit more interesting. So, okay, I've got three loaf pans here. And these are really deep loaf pans that I've got. So I'm going to set one on the counter. Actually, set it on the stove top here. And then I'm going to grease it with butter. You can also use Pam or cooking spray. Well, Pam is cooking spray. But any kind of, you know, cooking spray type thing. But we're going to use actual butter for this. Olive oil also works well for this type of thing, by the way. So I'm just going to take out some spreadable butter and spread it along the bottom and the side 
of the pan. And the reason why I'm greasing the side of the pan is I want to make sure that uh, the loaf does not stick at all. And now that that's done, I'm going to grab this roll and make sure it doesn't fall apart and place it in the center of the pan. Make sure it's kind of uh, flattened out. All right, I don't want this to start baking on the stove top. So I'm going to set this aside and now we're going to take out the rest of the dough for dough for from the bowl. And again, flatten it out. And just going to flatten it out really nice and thin. So then we can roll it back up into our loaf. And then we're gonna bake it for 40 minutes. Now, obviously I'm not gonna be with you for, for the whole 40 minutes, so how this is going to work is I'm going to get it in the oven and then I will come back after it's in the oven and we'll take it out together and see how it turned out. Okay, positioning this on the cutting board. This is tricky and I can see why they recommend the counter because you're not going to have this particular problem on a countertop where uh, you could potentially overshoot the cutting board. But the dough is stiff enough, and I probably could have let this, let this rise a little bit longer, I'm thinking, actually, but that's okay. Um, because you can at least pick it up and move it. I think I could have used more dough for the first one, because I think this is going to be a much larger loaf. But that's how the cookie crumbles, or I guess that's how the bread rises. So I'm just rolling it up. Yeah, I could have split the dough more evenly. So that is how that goes. But I guess if you go with Liz's method of uh, splitting it into rolls, then you also avoid this problem. So there is another benefit for sure. Okay, I'm going to wash up here before dealing with the butter. And we are going to dry off. All right, so let's get some more butter and we're gonna grease our other pan here. So I, I should go back to the loaf pan real quick because I don't think I really described it. So it's a small rectangle. It's not quite a 13 by nine or a nine by nine. It's, well, it's, it's more like a 13 by nine, but a lot smaller. So think of it as a mini 13 by nine pan, but with much taller sides instead of being all spread out. And the, the one I have at least is made out of metal. And you want this for things that are supposed to rise. So for like brownies, for instance, I mean, I guess you could use a loaf pan for a brownie, but uh, okay, this is not going to work because I used too much bread with this one. So I'm going to take some of this dough and add it to the other one because I actually had too much dough for the pan. That's how unevenly it got spread out. And then we can turn this dough around so it gets buttered on all sides. Why not? And uh, we'll do the same thing with loaf number two. And uh, we'll have us some interesting bread here. So, yeah, mini 13 by 9 pan. And now that that is done, do we have any left in the actual 
bowl. Nope, I actually got everything out of the mixing bowl. So, so you wouldn't want to perhaps really use this for like say brownies or whatever. You really want it for things that are supposed to rise and come to the top of the pan. And uh, that reminds me that Liz had mentioned sourdough bread. That would be an interesting type of bread to make. So I know not everybody likes sourdough bread. Okay, so I could, yeah, this one pan is heavier than the other pan, so I could add in a little bit more dough to this pan, try to make it a bit more even, but in the end it's just going to be what it is. And now I'm going to set the pans in the oven. I'll set them lengthwise, on, or widthwise rather. So when I put them in, I'm holding like the handle of the pan and the handle of the pan is facing me. Hey Google, set timer for 40 minutes. Okay, 40 minutes. So it says to keep an eye on the bread, so I won't be able to put my eyes on it, but I will be able to kind of open the oven door every now and then just to feel how it's turning out. But I have a feeling it's going to take most of the uh, minutes that we need. So... Stand by folks, I will be back in just a minute. So after taking the bread out of the oven, it did actually get a little bit burnt, but it wasn't bad. So it's something that I'm going to try again and see if I can do better at next time now that I know more of what I am doing. Oh, and one other note. I did indeed find my rolling pin the other day when I was not looking for the thing. How frustrating.